Welcome back everyone, let's go ahead and talk about none other than the OnePlus 7T and see how it holds up in 2021. Now what I can tell you is, is that first of all, this phone is an extremely amazing phone in so many different ways and I feel like the older it gets, the better it actually is. Now there are some areas where I don't like this phone and I'll get into that, but I think ultimately this device is a pretty decent device and I'd probably recommend it. It's going to be one of those devices that I recommend throughout this year. If you want to pick it up as well as some other phones I'd recommend recommend. Links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the front as always, this device had that 6.55 inch fluid AMOLED display. Now I don't know what it is with the super AMOLED dynamic AMOLED. This thing has an OLED display and I think that's in and of itself is a humongous asset. It is 1080p but I'm not really hating on it too much. It did come out in 2019 so it's not necessarily the latest and greatest device that ever came out. So I think for that resolution at that time it's okay again we still have 1080p displays on the galaxy s21 and stuff so i don't think it's really that far behind but on top of that being an oled display you also have 90 hertz on that display as well so i think that's another w for this type of device the fact that it has that capability is humongously important in my opinion and i feel like it's only getting more and more important having that type of capability as i stated before is just one of the most important things you can do so i think having that capability is extremely important and as stated before it's only getting more and more important so the display on this thing is beautiful you have a very little bezel around the panel you have that infinity v display whatever they call it camera hole in the front and i think this display still looks really good as you guys can see you have usb type c on the bottom a little bit of an edge to it on the back which feels really nice and you have i guess this like matte texture kind of back to it i have like the bullet gray model whatever they call it and it actually looks pretty good this is like one of my favorite design phones ever and you have that circular camera hole which I've always found to be extremely cool. I, I don't know, like I've always like, I think they knocked it out of the park with the 7T. I think the 7 series was actually pretty good too. I think the OnePlus 8 and 8T are like some of my favorite phones of last year. But the fact that this thing had this type of display and the fact that it had this type of camera was so cool to me. Like the camera module was just, just it being circular. It was something I haven't seen in like a very long time at that point, at least on a huge scale like what OnePlus did. So I think the camera hole on the back, you know, the camera circle is really cool. I think the build quality looks really good as well and i think the body of this thing is one of its biggest assets i think the body and the software for sure i think some other areas of the device are pretty good as well but the body for sure is a humongous asset in my opinion so in terms of the outside that really pretty much covers it up for the most part now hitting on the cameras like i just couldn't stop talking about it on the back it had that triple camera setup so it had a 48 megapixel wide angle lens a 12 megapixel telephoto lens and then a 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor now i think this camera quality on the back is actually pretty okay i actually don't think it's that bad and i don't think it's like an amazing camera i really don't think it was the best camera of 2019 i would definitely give that to the galaxy s10 but this camera is actually not bad so it has that three camera setup that i've all that i talk about in literally every single video this is one of the most important camera setups you can have so first of all having 4k 60 is extremely cool i love having that type of capability and just for that in it of itself is a humongous asset for sure now on top of that you have that wide angle telephoto and ultra wide sensor so you can zoom in a ton you can zoom out a ton and you have a high quality wide angle lens so those things are really important for me too so that camera on the back literally gets a thumbs up for me of course the quality wasn't amazing we are kind of pushing that 8k capability nowadays so it would have been kind of nicer had it had that type of capability but even that is not a big deal and i'm not really freaking out about it too much but but again, 4K60 on the back, thumbs up for me for sure. On the front, you do have that 16 megapixel sensor. Now you can do 1080p videos on that sensor as well. And I think it's pretty cool. But I think one of the more interesting things about this device is the back camera. I think the front camera could have used some work. And the sad thing is, even in 2019, I mean, like we already had 4K60 on the front. We had the iPhone 11 Pros and the iPhone 11s that have 4K60, the Galaxy S10 that have 4K60 on the front. That year was a year for a lot of devices to have that capability and i don't even think still we even though with the oneplus at we still don't have 4k 60 on the front of these oneplus devices and it's kind of getting out of control i feel like oneplus is going to be extremely behind on the camera standpoint and the fact that they still don't have that type of capability is really weird to me so i i mean take it as you will but definitely when it comes down to this specific camera 
in this specific front and back setup. I will say the back camera thumbs up, the front camera thumbs down. I think ultimately it's probably like a seven out of 10 when you factor in you know, everything for these two cameras. So in terms of that, that pretty much covers it up. Now hitting on, I still think one of the best things about this device, two things actually, the software and the battery life, and they kind of go hand in hand. So right now I have my specific OnePlus 7T on Android 10. I have heard Oxygen OS 11, which is based on Android 11, is a little bit different. They've kind of, you know, went away from their stock route and they're kind of doing more, I guess, one UI type of features on Oxygen OS, which I don't understand what they're doing. I hope that isn't the case. But in this specific example, Oxygen OS with, the, with at least Android 10 was a solid experience for me. I had a really good experience on that type of software. The best thing, I think this is the best software out. This has to be one of the best versions of Android. Android. I think, you know, Oxygen OS is built on stock Android. So you already have a pretty much a stock experience throughout, but you have so many features built in that it's actually gotten kind of close with stock Android. I think stock Android has been getting a much better rep recently, but I still think with Oxygen OS, you're still getting a lot more capability when it comes down to it in terms of the feature standpoint. And I think you do have custom ROMs for this thing too, and you can root it. So those two things, I mean, that is like the golden arches. Those are the best things about getting a stock Android phone like this, whether that's a Google Pixel, whether that's a OnePlus device. I think there's some other manufacturers too that I'm leaving out, but these two are like the biggest ones in my opinion and that is some really cool stuff i love having the ability of you know upgrading my device and getting on time updates on all that stuff and you kind of get that with this type of device still i don't know how many more versions of android it's going to get but it's probably going to get a few more in terms of stock os support but it's probably going to get a lot more in custom roms now you also have that 3800 million power battery inside of it which is a huge plus even though this thing has a bigger you know 90 hertz display it really doesn't take a toll in terms of the whole entire battery life of it because I think the battery life is still really, really good for sure. So that in and of itself, again, is another huge asset of it. And I think that's just, it just makes sense for this thing to have that type of capability. Now, unfortunately, there is no wireless charging, so we don't have any room to talk in that standpoint. But I think for every single other, for all intents and purposes, basically, this battery, this software is really good. And I think it's probably one of the best things keeping this phone alive. Now, ending it off with the performance, this device has that Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 Plus chipset. The octa-core CPU and two different models but both of them have eight gigabytes of RAM and what I can tell you about the performances is, is that it's still actually a pretty good performing device as expected. This thing really hasn't aged that much to be honest. Android 10 did come with that gesture based design which has really helped to kind of future proof a lot of these devices since we don't have to kind of focus on you know the nav bar buttons and all of that but on top of that you also have a really solid piece of software on this device. There's not a lot of bloatware everywhere. It's pretty basic when it comes down to you know the whole entire UI and everything is pretty much the same as all the other devices but it doesn't have all those little things running in the background which has just always annoyed me. So that is a really huge asset for this device as well. But even taking it a step further, the performance itself, I mean, whether you're doing small, you know, kind of basic tasks like responding to texts, phone calls, those type of things, you're going to still get a really smooth experience with it, taking it up even beyond that. If you're doing things, you know, like Google Docs and, you know, maybe doing some Excel work on your device and, you know, sending a lot of things to one person and videotaping and all that stuff and even video editing, you're going to have a really good experience with the OnePlus 7T. You're not really going to feel like it's a slow device or an old device or any anything like that, you're going to have a solid experience with it. But even taking it a step up beyond that, even if you're doing some really extreme work, if you're doing some really extreme, you know, graphically intensive stuff, if you're doing extreme gaming, editing a ton of videos and those type of things, you're going to have a good experience too. Now, if you're trying to multitask between a ton of different things, you may run into a, a little bit of a problem. But I think beyond that, the performance of the OnePlus 17 2021 is still solid. You're still going to have a really good experience with it. And I think that in and of itself gets a thumbs up for me for sure. So to kind of sum up this whole entire video and say answer the question, is the OnePlus 7T still worth it in 2021? Well, this is what I'll pretty much tell you and it may not even shock anybody, but this type of device in this day and age is still a solid contender for sure. There's really not a humongous amount of things that I complain about in this video, but I just want to reiterate the pros and the cons one more time. So first of all, the front of this device is beautiful. You have a really good display with a little bit of bezel around and not a big deal. And you 
you have that 90 hertz refresh rate on this panel as well, which is huge. You have USB-C, which is amazing. You have a really good feeling body with a pretty good back camera. You know, you have that triple camera setup, which is great. Now, it doesn't have the best front camera, only 1080p, and there's no wireless charging, and there's no IP certification. So it's not all perfect on this device. Even though you have a really good feeling body, it is missing out on some functionality that these phones this day and age already have, and it's kind of just a given. But I still even think with those things considered, it's still a pretty good body for sure. The software is amazing. It's one of the best assets for this device. And even if it's done getting stock software support, you still have, you know, Oxygen OS that are still potentially giving you updates there too. So again, another W in that standpoint. Now beyond that, you also have things like the great performance for the most part, the 90 hertz display that I mentioned, the great battery life, which is huge. So there's still a lot of things going for this device. But again, I would kind of think maybe like a Galaxy S10 would be the main contender in this price point. That device is beautiful. It's probably better in some areas than the OnePlus 7T. But I mean, the choice is yours. I think the OnePlus 7T is a great device to pick up in 2021 for sure. So again, if you want to pick up this device or any other phones that I recommend this year, links will be down in the description. You can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so me so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then